The problem with Ron Paul is his isolationist foreign policy scares the living daylights, I think, out of uh, most, and I will use the term, of us. Isolationism is not the solution. Building a wall around the United States won't work. But why do they use the term isolationism? That distorts the argument. Shrinking the military's role isn't the same as isolation. America can have a huge impact in the world without even deploying our military. And we do. What Ron Paul says is that defense ought to be defense, not offense. And with America going broke, we can't afford to spend more on our military now than we did when Russia threatened to annihilate us. But we do. Still, I'm nervous talking about defense. All these smart people say Ron Paul and I are just wrong. Many say America needs to spend more on the military. And some of them studied war for years. I didn't. I covered markets. So my instincts are to believe them. Except by covering markets, I did learn that government doesn't do anything well or efficiently. Why would that be different for defense? It isn't. In 2004, the U.S. military sent $12 billion in shrink-wrapped $100 bills to Iraq. Packages like this, $100,000 each. That $12 billion disappeared. We don't know what happened to it. The U.S. official in charge said there was so much cash flying around his office, they called these bricks footballs and they passed them around, the little pickup games. There's no cure for military inefficiency any more than there is a cure for waste at the post office. The point is that we should rely on government central planning as little as possible. Today, some people want the military to contain China, chase terrorists, train foreign militaries to chase terrorists, protect sea lanes, keep oil cheap, stop genocide, protect European, Asian and Middle Eastern states from aggression, spread goodwill through humanitarian missions, respond to natural disasters, secure the internet, police the Mexican border, and transform failed states into democracies. Politicians have a hard time saying no to such noble goals, but the list is endless, which is part of the problem. Transforming states, nation building, is the worst form of central planning. 11 years ago, running for president, George W. Bush said, I don't think our troops ought to be used for nation building. Yet four years later, he said, we're fighting a war so that the Iraqis can build a nation. I think candidate Bush rather than President Bush had the right idea. We have tried the nation build in Afghanistan now for more than 10 years. Are we winning hearts and minds? No. A recent poll of Afghans found just 43 percent had a favorable impression of the United States, way down from 83 percent in 2005. In Afghanistan, our attempt to nation build leads to PowerPoint slides like this one. When this was leaked, it became a hit on the Internet because it illustrates the overwhelming complexity of the problem. What's the likelihood that American soldiers understood this thing, let alone were able to put a workable plan into action? Saying no to nation building isn't the same as isolationism. By all means, let our movies and music alarm mullahs. Let our websites and books disseminate ideas autocrats consider dangerous. Let us trade with everybody. It said when goods cross borders, armies don't. And a new report funded by European governments says the level of armed conflict in Muslim countries is far lower today than it was two decades ago. And that trade is a reason. We do need a strong military. But we don't need to police the whole world.